I grew up in Rutherford County, North Carolina, which is between Charlotte and Asheville, and nestled up against the South Carolina line just north of Spartanburg. We moved there when I was one. There's nothing there. At least there wasn't when I was a kid. The only place to go out and get a hamburger was the A and W drive-in. We didn't get uh, Hardee's until I was about 10. And when I was 16, big news happened to Rutherford County. We got a mall with a McDonald's. Now in that mall is a cafe. And to this day, <coughs> Folks around Rutherford County will call the cafe the Cult Cafe because it is owned and run and employed and managed and staffed by people who belong to a very strange church. They meet way up in the wilderness of the county where there really isn't anything. And if you're anywhere near there, you hear all sorts of screams and howls and shouts and all sorts of strange things going on at that church. So people laugh and just say, oh, that's the, our, our county cult. And then they say, that's the cult cafe. Well, now, folks, the cult cafe, the church, and my county are now in the national news. This week, across my Facebook feed and all the national news feeds, there is now a big trial going on in Rutherford County. The pastor and leaders of the church are on trial. They ask for a change of venue because they believe that maybe no one in the county could be impartial, but the judge denied the change of venue. They are being charged with kidnapping and assault because during one of their services, they grabbed a young man who was a member of the congregation. Now you need to understand that this particular group has very strict rules about what you do, how you live. In fact, they, they dictate who you marry, whether or not you can have children, all sorts of things. Well, they took this young man and they held him and they pummeled him with their fists and they screamed in his face to get the demons out of him because he was not living a lifestyle that they believed was appropriate. And we wonder why people don't want to be Christians. Yesterday, in the St. John's parking lot, over 225 adults and children gathered for an incredible pig picket. It was an awesome sight to behold and an incredible experience to be a part of. As with all our parties, lots of folks came that were not members of this congregation, many of whom didn't have a church home at all. We provided an opposite contrast. You see, in today's gospel, Jesus comes to the disciples and we bookend at the same place that we left off on Easter day. Jesus comes in, appears, and says to the disciples who are afraid, peace be with you. And then he breathes on them. Just as the Spirit of God breathed over the waters at the beginning of creation as all things became in place. Just as Jesus breathed into the nostrils of the first human beings, giving them life and relationship with him, Jesus breathes on the disciples, and then he says something quite interesting. If you bind people up, they're going to stay bound up, but if you free people, they're going to be free forever. And what I heard yesterday, going on in the midst of the eating and the drinking and the dancing, I got to wander amongst and just listen to conversations. And the conversations were not the kind of conversations that you would expect to hear at a pig picket. I heard people talking about their faith in Jesus Christ. I heard people talking about what they love about this church. I saw and heard people inviting people to come. 
I heard people describing in great detail all the different kinds of worship services we offer, why this particular church made a difference in their life. I heard people, some of the people that you would never, ever imagine, talking about their faith, talking to people, and you could just see the people they were talking with starting out with kind of a quizzical look on their face like, am I really hearing this? This is coming out of you? That breath of the Holy Spirit was coming out of the people who were sharing, and it was swirling around the people that were hearing. <coughs> And you could tell that people were intrigued. You see, in the day of Pentecost that we heard in the first reading, it was a violent, huge, big kind of explosion. Tongues of fire, disciples speaking all sorts of different languages so they could proclaim their faith in Jesus Christ. But on that Easter day, it was much quieter. It was just a breath, and Jesus says that if you proclaim me just as the Father has sent me, so I will send you. If you go out and talk about what God has done for you in Jesus Christ, then the Spirit of God flows out of you and swirls around others. Because the bottom line is this, that we are called to set people free. We are called to help people understand that a faith in God and Jesus Christ could be fun, and that's what you showed yesterday, how fun it was to be a follower of Jesus. To be a follower of Jesus provides healing and hope and new life and transformation, and those are the stories that I heard people sharing, sometimes with absolute and complete strangers. At the very end of the night, a group came up of six or seven young men and women they came in, started visiting, and guys started saying, let me tell you about my church. Let me tell you about this place. And they were just dumbfounded that people would be willing to share. But that is our purpose. That is our goal. That is the reason for our being. Jesus says to the first disciples, just as he says to us, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when you go out and when you share the good news of what Christ has done for you, what God has done for you, how you've been healed, how you've been changed, how you've been transformed, then that Holy Spirit that's breathed on you comes pouring out of you, swirling around others and unties the things that tie them up. When we go out and share, when we go out and renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God, when we stand in the breach between the powers of darkness and the powers of light, when we stand for freedom and openness and new life and new hope, and the Spirit of God swirls, sometimes we get to see the fruit. Sometimes that Spirit is just planting seeds for someone else to see the harvest. But sisters and brothers in Christ, I could not be more proud and more filled with joy at the great testimony of love and life and openness and freedom that this community shares on a regular basis and particularly shared last night. You want to see the Holy Spirit at work? And do what Jesus says. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Go out, keep sharing, keep changing lives by sharing the testimony of what God has done for you. And watch the Spirit swirl and move and change the world.